All right, Ryan Johnson. You know, after all the Last Jedi hate and just people tearing you up online, let's see what you're made of. What is going on, guys? Welcome back to my channel, and this is my review for the new murder mystery film, Knives Out. This movie was written and directed by Ryan Johnson, who I know everyone just loves, guys. I know it. Right? Right? It has an ensemble all-star cast after the patriarch and a family dies during his 85th birthday. A detective must investigate the crime scene and figure out who in the family murdered the patriarch. I've been really excited for this movie, and The Last Jedi, I know, you know, I'm going to do a review for that very soon, leading up to episode 9. I don't hate The Last Jedi as much as a lot of other people do. I think there are some really great things that Ryan Johnson is able to do with episode 8, and then there's also some things that are very frustrating, of course. But I was really looking forward to this movie because it's a fresh, new take on the whodunit genre. And also, we have Ryan Johnson, who wrote and directed this film. And I gotta say that this is a fantastic movie. This is a great time at the theater. I would have said fun time, but knowing all the COPA laws and regulations, if I say fun, which I just did twice, it, it deems this video made for kids, which... Oh, I'll probably do another video, a different video, talking about COPA in general and how it could impact the YouTube community. This is a great time at the theater. This is one of the better films of the year. I'm not going to say one of the best films of the year. I do have it right now currently at number 11, so it is outside of my top 10. But it is a great, solid film. It's one of the most entertaining times that you'll have at the theater this year. Let me start off with a little bit of the negatives. Which, they're not big, they're not major, they're just very small and menial, but they definitely move this movie down a little bit for me. Number one, I have to say, some of the comedy works in strides, and some of the comedy just doesn't land. They try to do something where they have some commentary that's very interesting, and some kind of backdrop into maybe something that's happening right now in our day and age, or they try to land a joke in terms of certain political views, and they just don't really work in a way that they could have. I just feel like some of them are just kind of forced dialogue that doesn't feel natural to what the characters would actually be saying and actually be doing. On that note, there are a couple of characters here that I feel aren't fleshed out enough. I think Jamie Lee Curtis is fantastic when we get her on screen. There's not enough there for her character to kind of grow and develop. I think Michael Shannon does a really good job for the small sampling they give him. Chris Evans does a fantastic job who plays a bigger role in the film than I thought, for sure. But there are some other people who I feel like I wish that they would have just kind of amplified a little bit within their respective roles. And one of them is Lakeith Stanfield. I think the dude is so great as an actor. In this movie, he plays this kind of police officer that doesn't believe in Daniel Craig's detective character at all. Doesn't believe that there is any murder to solve, but that this is really a suicide. I wish that they would have given a little bit more for Lakeith Stanfield to kind of chew on in the scenes and be a little bit more impactful to the story. Because if you really take out his character from this movie, nothing truly changes. You could have had anybody just interrogate all these characters at the beginning of the film and nothing really would have changed the, the entire film. So it felt like a lot of the Finn scenario from episode eight. That's the only Star Wars comparison I'll make in this video, I promise. But other than those things, those small things, this is an awesome movie and feels very proper for me to repeat this, but again, the comedy, when it works and lands, it really works. I mean, it lands in strides. It's really funny. There's one comedic bit about a donut that Daniel Craig's character is kind of ranting about a donut and how this investigation to him feels like a donut with a hole missing in the center. And it goes on for about two minutes, and I'll tell you what, it is hilarious. Probably the funniest stuff within the film. Other things that are really good about this movie, Ana de Armas, man. I don't know of anybody who could watch this movie and not say that she really steals the show. Daniel Craig is phenomenal. He, he really does play this really kooky and almost exaggerated character, but he does it in such a classy way where you really buy in to the character's kookiness, and it really plays on the humor of the film. 
But Ana de Armas is phenomenal. She is so good in this movie. I would contend that she is the lead character. We follow her journey throughout the entire film. And that was really nice to see. It wasn't a film that revolved around Chris Evans as much. It wasn't a film that really evolved around Daniel Craig as much as it did Ana de Armas and her character. Another thing I really loved about this film is the pacing. This movie has phenomenal pacing. When I say phenomenal, I mean it's edited perfectly. It never felt too long. It never felt like the scenes dragged. It never felt slow. It never felt too fast. I mean, it was perfectly paced the way that this film needed to be. And I also really like the fact that there is almost a contrast in terms of when you're in the house, in this huge, luxurious mansion of a house, it feels like you're watching a film from the 1960s. And I always love that. And they do a really good job of separating the differential between the 1960s feel of the house, and then when you go outside of the house, the modern feel of the 2010s era. So I really love the, the contrast and the way that things kind of play out. It feels very Clue-ish, and they never really get to a point where the movie just gets maybe a little too oversaturated with that 60s feel or that 2019s modern feel. Because there was at times where characters pulled out phones, I was like, oh, wow, yeah, this is a modern film set in the modern era. So it makes sense why they have phones, but it just never really dawned on me because at certain moments you feel like this is a movie that is placed in the 1960s when cell phones didn't exist. I really enjoyed this movie. I think that another thing that I took away from this film is the way that Ryan Johnson is able to create an atmosphere. He really makes it feel like a mystery. The music plays in to the game. This is truly, it feels like you're literally involved in this game trying to figure out who did it. As you're going along in the game, the further and further you get, the more amplified the music gets. And that's the great way that Ryan Johnson's able to kind of craft this atmosphere alongside of the setting and the backdrop and the music, the editing, everything just feels atmospheric and perfect in the way that these characters are going to react and the way that these characters interact with one another. I love this movie, guys. It is a definite go out and check it out at the theater. It is a great time at the movies. I just want to know, did you see whatever the ending is coming? Don't give any context. Don't spoil it down below in the comments section. But I do want to hear your guys' thoughts and opinions on if you predicted the way it was going to end. Because I kind of predicted a little bit of it, but not necessarily all of it. Anyway, guys, make sure you drop a like on the video if you enjoyed it. Subscribe to my channel for more content just like this. And as always, I'll see you guys in my next video. Goodbye.